Okay. So this problem, this we're going to look at kinetics, kinetics of rigid bodies. Rigid bodies. Oh, I don't need to write. I got to remember. I don't need to write because I have sound. <laughs> okay. Kinetics of rigid bodies. And in and, and this one, this case, we're just going to be looking at rotation. Okay. And so just as a quick summary, if I have a, um, if I have a body, you know, and people always draw that potato right here, it has a mass center G, okay, and a bunch of external forces on it. We covered this today, essentially, okay, F2, F3, okay, a bunch of moments, you know, moments going all over the place, all kinds of things, and the weight, W, right? And then we have, you know, and, I, and I, again, I, I like to draw the inertial term as redundant as it may seem. It's good practice, okay? It's just really good practice just to just so that you keep things straight, especially in a panic situation like a test, you know, to provide some stru structure and organization to your to your life in these, like, pressure-packed moments. But you have, uh, um, and it's, it's let's say there's a, a shoot. Do we have rotate? We had rotation about a point. So here, let's just choose, like, this as the axis of rotation here, okay? But we had this path here. If this is the axis of rotation here, okay, and everything is kind of going omega or angular velocity there and angular acceleration there, the path of point G is a... What's the path of point G? It's a circle. Good. It's a circle. It's circular. And we were going to use normal and tangential components, and we would have... The tangential component A, oops, M, A, all right, okay, so before we do the, so M, A, M, A, G in the tangential direction, which is here, plus T, and then we have the plus N direction, and here this would be this M, A, M, A, G, N, and then we have this i g alpha okay i g alpha all right and if we want to take moments about any other point we have to apply essentially the parallel axis theorem all right parallel axis theorem which and so this is this equations of motion or f equals you know in the n direction we have fn equals m a g n in the t direction we have f t equals m a G T and in the the rotation we have some of the moments about G is equal to I G alpha. Okay. Alright. Okay. Alright. And so here let's so here again this 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 structure right here, you know, the this potato shape, which as useless as it may be, is just a pattern that you should follow when you try to solve these problems, right? external force or free body diagram, uh, set up the inertial diagram, and then set up your equations of motion or your F equal MA. So let's let's take, for instance, a beam. So let's take, for instance, oh, you don't have to write down. It's all here. It's all in video, right? So let's take, for instance, a beam. Let's take a beam here. Be a beam here. <laughs> Not beer. Okay. Here, supported by a spring, right? with a rope right and here's a rope right here okay and and here's this rope and and I, you know we've got some mass associated with this beam there's some mass uh what else there's a, a you know there's all these geometric and mass properties um okay that's great and we want to find fine so we're given all these things given what are we given we're given the length here this length here, I'll call that L, okay? All right? And the, where's the mass center for this? It's, it's if this is a slender rod. Let's take this as a slender rod. Forget the beam. Slender rod, okay? All right, where's the mass center? L over 2, so right here in the center, G, okay? All right? And what else are we? We'll, we'll know. Okay, so that's all we know, right? And, and we know we're given all these things, okay? So M... G and we can calculate I or it can be given to us I G the mass moment of inertia all right and we want to know we want to find in this maybe in this problem we want to find the um, was it the angular acceleration angular acceleration 
at the instant the rope is cut. The rope is cut. Okay, and let's call this point A here, and let's call this point B. So at B, the rope is cut. Okay, all right. All right, what should we do first? What's one thing we could do first? Maybe a free, what, free body diagram, right? Okay, so one FBD, okay, FBD here. And I would have here, here, I would have this, and I have a force in this from the spring here. I'll call this force spring at A, okay? And then I would have the tension force in the cable. Uh, I'll just call this, oh, tension force at B, but then it gets cut, right? It gets cut, so this is pretty much useless. This goes to zero, okay? All right, all right, fair enough, okay? And then what else do I have? The weight at G, so W at point G, okay? So the weight at G, and that looks pretty good, right? That looks pretty good, okay? And then I'm gonna have my inertial diagram for this rod here. And I'm moving in a, in a circular point G, this point G is going to move in a circular path, right? About the spring, about point A. So here's the circular path at A, right? Okay. And I would have my inertial components would be here. If I know that the path is going to look like something like this, this is going to be M, ooh, M, A, G, T. And this right here is M, A, G, N. Yeah. Right? And then I'm going to have some sort of alpha, which is IG alpha, some, some rotational thing, whatever that's called. <laughs> Who cares? All right. As long as we know what it is, right, and what it does. Okay. All right. IG alpha right here, right? And so, okay, shoot. Let's solve, and we got to find the angular acceleration. So which, which equation can I use? Oh, T or the moment, maybe, huh? Oh, yeah, I could use T or the moment. Oh, that's good. That's, that's, that's good. Okay, let's use, how about the moment? Let's try the moment, okay? All right, so what point should I take moments about? You know, I, you know, I, I would want to take moments about A. Okay, I'm going to tell you right now first that because it's a spring here, okay? It, the, this, this is the reason this problem is tricky. It's a spring here. It's not a hinge, right? So you can't assume that it's like this nice, clean rotation. The only thing that you have present here is a force the instant it's cut. Okay, I, you know, and, okay. And, and so if I had, if I had looked at this right here, the, this force in the spring right here, from before it gets cut, you would tell me that this, what would this force be right here? These two forces, if this is the weight here, and that's right in the middle, what would this force be right here? It would just be W over 2. These would be W over 2. And the instant that this gets cut, this goes to 0. And then all of a sudden, I have this imbalance. But this, the instant right after it's cut, this force in the spring is still the weight divided by 2. Okay? So now, if I apply the equations of equilibrium, okay, to equilibrium equations, equilibrium equations, okay, I apply these right here, then I would say, hey, check this out. I'm going to take moments about G equals IG alpha, okay? And I'm going to say um, this is positive. I'm going to be consistent with whatever I did for IG alpha. The direction I, I set for alpha is what I'm going to choose as positive here to keep my inertial term positive, okay? And, and the mo if I take moments about G, I'm taking moments about G, I'm going to have, and this distance here is L over 2, right here. I'm going to have, uh, let's see, F, S, P times L over 2 um, is equal to I, G, alpha. Yeah? Okay, is equal to I, G, alpha. And I, G for a slender rod is, I believe, if you look in, like, like just different handbooks, IG, the mass moment inertia for a slender rod about its centroid, rotating about, is 112 ml squared. OK? 
Okay. And then you would have here, this would just be the force of the spring is mg over 2 times L over 2 is equal to 1 12th ml squared times alpha. And then alpha would just be, let's see, 12, the masses would cancel. And then the, one of the L's would cancel. So this would be G 3G over L. Does that look right? 3G over L. And I think that would be alpha. That would be our angular acceleration. And if we get a positive result, which looks like we will, then that means our orientation is correct. Okay. Yeah.